In our last episode, we tied up some loose ends for the NCR in the Mojave. And now, it's time to meet the General at the southern part of Hoover Dam. Well, you took your sweet-ass time coming here. Let's get down to brass tacks. We need to get this thing moving if we want to keep the element a surprise. I don't have time to talk right now. Good. You just stand there and listen. Then that'll make this go faster. What's this all about? You've done some great work for us up to this point, and we're hoping to use your unique abilities to aid us once again. Thanks to the task my subordinates have delegated to you, the NCR now has a unique opportunity. What opportunity is that? We now have a chance to take the fight to those bastards on their home turf. I'm in the beginning stages of planning out an assault on the fort. I've made calls to our allies, and they're on their way to our position. Once our forces are in place and garrison here, we'll begin our assault. But before he can speak any further, an engineer interrupts us. Sir, I don't know what happened. A bunch of legionnaires just stormed into the power station. Into the power station? How is that possible? I don't know, sir. There was some talk of them entering through the clog intake tunnels, but I don't have any confirmation. On my way up here, there was some chatter about their commander, the Legate, I think he's called, set up at some kind of base on the eastern bank. Okay, listen here. Unless we can get some additional support, I'm gonna need you to help me resolve this situation. You need to make your way to this camp they have on the eastern bank and take out the Legate. That should hamstring this attack. Can you offer any additional support? Like I said earlier, we have some supplemental forces on the way, but this wasn't the situation I was expecting, so I can only offer what is on hand. Okay, I'll take care of him. Thanks for your support. I'll make sure the NCR emergency radio is up and running. Go kill those bastards. Good gracious. The Legion is using the intake tunnels to storm their way into the dam. Someone has to stop them. Good gracious, indeed. What can I do to help them? Hmm. I think that you should be able to divert the flow of the water into the generator turbines. That would grind them up like a hamburger. The computer to activate it is just ahead, but you may need to go outside to activate the manual override. That system hasn't been used in a while. Grind them up into hamburger? I like what I'm hearing. All right, activate the computer, and then go outside to activate the manual override. Got it. I'll take care of it. Good luck. <laughs> I'm going to find a place to not get shot. And with that, we hear gunfire from the other side of the northern door. Opening it up, we find NCR soldiers and Brotherhood of Steel paladins, surprisingly in T-45 power armor instead of T-51 power armor, attacking the Legion. The Legion snuck in through the tunnels. Their Brotherhood is only here if we convince them to ally with the NCR, as I explored in yesterday's video. Though, frustratingly, they only sent a couple of paladins. Now, we've got to find a computer. But as we move forward, more legionaries spill out of a nearby doorway. We can turn plant number four upside down, but we don't find a computer. But as we head to plant number three, we get attacked by another wave of legionaries. These come from the east. With plant four finally clear, we can head out the northern door to enter plant number three. And immediately we get charged by a wave of centurions to the northwest. And they just keep coming. As we walk forward, another wave comes out the same door. <laughs> After 
after plant number three is clear, we can find the computer by walking up some stairs to the southwest. Continuing straight, we arrive on a ledge and we find some consoles and terminals directly to the east. The one furthest to the east is the overflow control console. This console controls the overflow controls for the generator intake tunnels. It looks like you can divert the auxiliary intake into the generators, but this requires a science skill of 65 or higher. If we have such a skill, we can divert the water, and we learn that the dials on the panel show a blockage with the intake system. The pressure will need to be relieved at the manual override valve. We now have to find the manual override valve outside, and to do so, we turn around and head back south into plant number four. From here, we take the staircase to the east, only to be rushed by another group of legionaries. Once they're dead, we can exit the dam by taking the door to the east outside. This puts us out on a concrete lip overlooking the Colorado at the base of Hoover Dam. Facing north, we see some legionaries waiting for us. Once they're dead, we now have to find the manual pressure release valve, and we find it near to the second sandbag barricade right along the water. As we activate it, the force of the water pressure releasing chews up the legionaries blocking the tunnel. And with that, we learned that the dam overflow has been diverted into the turbines, thus completely blocking off the Legion's only way into the power plant. No more Legionaries can arrive, but we still have to deal with the ones that are already here. And there must have been quite a few in the tunnels. Their blood stains the Colorado red. Heading back into plant number four, we can retrace our steps back into plant number three, and since we already cleared this one when looking for the terminal, we can continue to the north into plant number two. And just just like last time, we immediately get rushed by legionaries. Moving forward, we stumble into another wave. But where's my NCR backup? And where are the paladins? Have they all died? I feel like I'm doing this all by myself. Continuing north, just as we're about to enter plant number one, we hear commotion off to the southwest. More legionaries arrive on the level above us. Hey, there you are, guys. Where you been? I've been having all the fun without you. Have you seen the paladins? Some help they've been. When clear, we can move into plan number one. And immediately we get charged by legionaries from the northwest.
Well, at least the NCR was here this time to support us. We can continue to the north, but we see that the doors are on fire. Oh no, Colonel Moore. I hope she's all right. Heading upstairs, we can begin our ascent out of the dam, only for the legionaries to hop out of a door and surprise us. There you are. Come on. When they're dead, we can climb the stairs and cross over to the northwest. The doors to the dam offices are on fire, and we can no longer access that part of the dam. So our only way forward is to take the elevator to the visitor center. And as soon as we arrive, we find NCR troops in power armor alongside Arcade Ganon, fighting against the Legion. Arcade! Good to see ya, buddy! What's up? What about the rest of the remnants? What do you think they'll do at the dam? I don't think you need to worry about the specifics. Basically, expect a lot of firepower and dead bodies. Enclave technology is even more advanced than Brotherhood equipment. And in the hands of soldiers as experienced as Moreno and the others? Let's just say it's truly a sight to behold. Arcade Ganon only appears here in his Ganon family Tesla power armor if we first convince the Enclave remnants to fight alongside the NCR and then convince Arcade Ganon to personally come and fight alongside the remnants during this battle. I went through this entire process when I did my video on the Enclave remnants that you can watch here. But to continue the fight, we have to step outside. And as soon as we do... Greetings, Courier. We caught word the battle was about to begin. We arrived before the road was closed off. Our warriors are here to assist you. The Khans joined the NCR, and for the first time in their sordid history, they stand side by side, and not a moment too late, a cadre of the Legion Centurions attack from the north. We now have to move across the dam to meet with Legatlanius on the other side of the river. As we do, we see more legionaries pour across the dam from one of the intake towers. They must have already made it across before we diverted the flow of water. Once dead, we continue, and we see the boomers fly in from the southeast. With this part of the dam secure, we can open the hatch to the Hoover Dam checkpoint. Inside, we find a very hard lock terminal sitting on a table to the southwest. Popping a programmer's digest to hack this bad boy, we find two options. Under generator security diagnostic, Attention all structural engineers. There was a problem with the remote diagnostic protocols set up for the generators on the dam. It turns out that activating the remote diagnostics has a good chance to cause the generators to overload. Because of this, the diagnostic program is going to be disabled. The next option is to reactivate the generator diagnostic. If we do so, we think that if we had a remote detonator, we could set it up to cause the generators to explode. Not sure if causing damage to Hoover Dam is what the NZR was thinking when they asked for our services, but if we have a remote detonator handy, when we next activate the generator diagnostics, we plug our remote detonator into the terminal and set the primary trigger mechanism to begin the diagnostics on the generators. Now, activating the detonator should cause the generators to explode. All right, I think I understood that. With the detonator in hand, we can turn around and move to the northeast. Here we find a ladder leading to the roof of the checkpoint, overlooking the dam to the east. We see some legionaries far off to the east, but pulling out our detonator and pulling the trigger, 
the generators below explode, knocking the legionaries over the side. Heading back downstairs, we see the NCR troops pour into the checkpoint. Looks like they are done to the west, so to continue, we can open the door to the east. And as soon as we arrive on the eastern side of the dam... Alpha Squad reporting in. Thanks for the support back there. We've been assigned to ensure you make it to the Legate. How can we be of assistance? A group of NCR Ranger veterans come to our aid. We can have them aid us in a number of ways. We could say, I need some snipers to cover my advance. Roger that. I'll have snipers move to position. With that, NCR Ranger snipers appear. They stand here and cover us as we move forward. Or we can say, I can manage this without your assistance. Confirmed. We'll fall back. Good luck. With that, the Rangers turn around and move west. Or we can pass an 85 speech check to say, you have superior firepower. You can overwhelm them if you push the advance on them. You're in charge of this operation. That sounds like a suicide mission, but our orders are to take commands from you. Unit, let's move out. And we send them on a suicide mission. They race out in front of us and immediately clash with legionaries. Or we can say, have your unit follow me. We'll all assault them together head on. Confirmed. We'll stay with you and help you break through the line. And with that, instead of staying back and sniping or moving ahead without us, they follow us into battle. And none too soon. As soon as we move east, legionary centurions emerge from a nearby tower. We then move east along the top of the dam. We see another intake tower to the east, and it's likely that the legion will pour out of it. But just then, the Enclave arrive in an Enclave Vertibird with Daisy Whitman at the controls. Thanks, Daisy. Fly safe. And if we convince the remnants, as well as Orion Marino, we find them here in their Enclave uniforms, wielding extremely powerful weapons. Orion Marino. Now's not the time. Judah Krager. Let's get going. We have a battle. For you. Doc Henry. Keep your head down. Could be snipers around. And Cannibal Johnson. You better get moving, kid. There's bad guys to kill. The NCR troopers and rangers pour in from the west to support us, and just as we predicted, more legionaries emerge from the intake tower to the northeast. But they are no match for the Enclave weapons. We can just stand back and let them take care of it. To continue, we move southeast, where we see even more legionaries. But we are surprised by another group from behind us. And the good doctor with a few well-aimed plasma grenades. Nice job, Doc. As we continue south, we pass by the bodies of NCR troopers, soldiers who died in the Legion's surprise attack. But we safely cross the Colorado. Now on the eastern side, the road turns east, and here we can pick off one remaining Legionary and his dog. At the end of the road, we find a gate leading to the Legate's camp. And here we see that the Enclave remnants come with us. Where are the NCR? No troopers, no rangers, the Brotherhood is long gone. But hey, at least the Enclave is here. They're all I need. And indeed, the Enclave remnants proved to be invaluable in this fight. Moving towards the Legates camp, we pass through a road lined with crosses, and we can take care of a sniper in a tower to the southeast. Then a legionary that rushes from the camp. And then the remnants discover a wolf pen. we are distracted, the Praetorian Guard rushes us from behind, but of course they're only wielding fist weapons. I'm sure had they gotten to our less armored comrades here, Doc Henry and Judah Krieger, they might have done some damage, but our long-range weapons kill them before they can even reach us. 
Our Pip-Boy compass tells us that there's an enemy to the northeast, but we can't see him from here. So to continue, we can follow a path to the east. Here we see two NCR troopers. Where'd you guys come from? Hey, where are you going? Oh. And Legatlanius, the terror of the east, rips them apart with just a few swings. He stands in the middle of the road, blocking our path. We have no choice but to confront him. And who are you to come before me? You bear the insignia of the bear, yet you do not wear it as a soldier of the West wears it. But with Legat Lanius, we find all of the same dialogue options that we explored when we confronted him back when we ended the game with Robert House. To find out what he has to say here, you can watch that video by clicking here. There is an option to convince him via dialogue to flee, but if we choose not to or we can't, we can always attack. And he races at us with his Praetorian Guard. Tragically, his Praetorian Guard beeline towards Doc Henry and Judah Krieger, who aren't wearing any decent armor. I did my best to try to save them. But Cannibal Johnson and Orion Marino are invaluable here. This fight is ten times easier with them. And at last, Legat Lanius lies dead. But oh no, Doc Henry. Oh, and Judah. I should have been more careful. As we learned when we explored this camp, when siding with Caesar and House, there's nothing else much here. So heading down the hill to leave, we finally get noticed by the guard to the northeast. Hey. We can move west through the gate to head back to Hoover Dam. That's a fine bit of work back there. Truth told, I'm surprised you made it out of there in one piece. You and the dam. I'm impressed to say the least, and that's no easy thing. You've secured NCR's future. The administration sends its thanks for what it's worth. Sometimes I wonder if NCR wouldn't lose the whole West if they weren't sitting on it. Look, the NCR isn't everyone here, and it definitely ain't you. It's filled with people that take action and don't wait for someone to say what's right and wrong and make sure the proper form's filled out. When there's an example of that kind of success, that can shake things up enough so the good that came with the intention shines through. I couldn't have done it alone, and I appreciate the assist along the way. Least we could do. And seeing those shits of Caesar kicking dirt as they ran did my heart good, let me tell you. Might see some recruitment number rise, build some morale out in the Mojave long enough for the NCR to find its feet again. All due to you. Again, you have my thanks. And all the West, too. Once they pass it over the radio, after signing the right release forms... It was my duty, General. I was glad to help out. And we're glad to have you. And whether you're a soldier of the Republic or not, you're it in my eyes. Sometimes the Republic gets lost along the way while it's trying to follow its instincts. But when soldiers like you come along, it helps them get back on track and does it by example. And what you've done here today, that's going to keep us going for a while. So what happens now? We clean up, take prisoners, watch the East for any more trouble from the Legion. Though I think they're still running, according to our scouts. After that, we'll see what happens when the dust settles and how the Mojave looks now without Caesar coming for its throat. Something tells me we better enjoy this breather while we can. And if that means Vegas, then you and the troops have earned it. Maybe traveling is in order. Can't keep the courier spirit down, eh? Fair enough. We'll clean up here. 
I think I'm going to rest for a bit, if you don't mind. Of course not. You earned it. Rest up. Let us carry things for a while. Kind of curious how this is going to pan out in the long run. But I guess history will tell us in its own sweet time. And with that, we complete the game. Now, in order to not repeat myself, I'm only going to show the ending game slides that are unique to siding with the NCR. So I won't show slides that I've already showed in other videos, or slides we only get by siding with other factions. If we side with the New California Republic... The New California Republic celebrated its second victory at Hoover Dam, establishing definitive control over the entire Mojave wasteland. Soon after... They negotiated terms to annex the Strip, Freeside, and many surrounding communities. The Mojave Wasteland, at long last, had entirely fallen under the NCR's banner. If our courier has good karma... The courier, fair and even-handed in her dealings throughout the Wasteland, was honored by the NCR for her support of the military at Hoover Dam. If our courier has neutral karma... Though the courier's agenda was debated by many... He was honored by NCR for his support of the military at Hoover Dam. And if our courier has evil karma... With brutal methods that few in NCR would approve of, it was the courier who secured NCR's victory at Hoover Dam. Despite his extreme actions, he was awarded with the Golden Branch, the highest civilian decoration given by the Republic. If we kill the boomers... Without organized leadership, the remaining boomers slowly drifted away, leaving Nellis Air Force Base to be flooded by prospectors and scavengers. All of the boomers' accumulated knowledge quickly scattered, and their existence slowly faded from memory. If we never completed the boomers' quests... After the Battle of Hoover Dam, the NCR mounted several campaigns against the boomers, but all were quickly ended by the boomers' artillery. Over time, as the boomers found a need for gunpowder, they developed a relationship with the gunrunners, trading their surplus crops for munitions. But if we completed their quests and convinced them to side with the NCR... With the help of the gunrunners, the boomers developed a healthy trading relationship with the NCR. Eventually, the boomers began wandering out into the wasteland, while still preventing outsiders from entering Nellis. If we initiated self-destruct in Hidden Valley and killed all of the Brotherhood... Buried beneath tons of rubble, the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel was no more. Those few who were outside the Hidden Valley bunker when it was destroyed settled into new lives, or headed west to find a new chapter to join. If instead we convinced Elder McNamara to ally with the NCR... The Brotherhood and the NCR in the Mojave Wasteland declared an official truce despite continued hostilities between the two in the West. As per their agreement, the NCR handed over all suits of salvaged power armor, and in return, the Brotherhood helped patrol I-15 and Highway 95. If we completed Veronica's personal quest, convinced her to stay with the Brotherhood, but then destroyed Hidden Valley Bunker... The death of the Mojave Brotherhood came much too soon for Veronica, and in their absence, she felt truly lost. Yet in its wake, she took small comfort in her decision to remain by their side through their few remaining days. If we completed her quest, but convinced her to join the followers of the Apocalypse and then destroyed Hidden Valley Bunker... Though she'd seen the writing on the wall, the destruction of the Mojave Brotherhood came far more suddenly than Veronica had expected. The news devastated her. Despite her best efforts to leave her past behind, she found herself compelled to make one final journey to Hidden Valley. There, she paid her last respects to the only family she had ever known. If we completed her quest, convinced her to stay with the Brotherhood, and then formed a truce between the Brotherhood and the NCR... The peace with NCR served to ease Veronica's worries about the Brotherhood's immediate future. Still, a distance had arisen between her and her fellow members that would never be bridged. She began secluding herself in crumbling libraries of the old world, learning of promising technologies she knew the Brotherhood would never adopt. And finally, if we completed her personal quest, but convinced her to join the followers of the Apocalypse, and then formed a truce between the Brotherhood and the NCR... Despite her departure from the group, the Brotherhood's peace treaty with NCR came as some relief to Veronica. Though she remained friendly with surface patrols, she was never again permitted to enter the bunker she once called home. Fearing for the safety of anyone she associated with, she continued her solitary life as a scavenger. 
But reports would emerge from Mojave scientists and social workers of old equipment miraculously repaired and research notes mysteriously completed. If we never killed the leaders of the fiends... Never weakened by NCR, the fiends staged an attack against Camp McCarran during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam. Though NCR repulsed the fiends, they suffered heavy losses in the process. If we only killed some of them... Though weakened, the fiends attacked McCarran during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam. NCR repulsed the attack with minimal losses and, in the following days, destroyed the remaining fiend leaders, breaking their power forever. Or if we killed all of them... Their leaders destroyed by the courier, the fiends scattered throughout the wasteland. Without the organization of Motor Runner, Cook Cook, Violet, and Driver Nephi, they were easy prey. If we never went back to the old Mormon fort to convince Julie Farkas to support the NCR... After the NCR's victory at the dam, the followers of the Apocalypse were pushed out of Old Mormon Fort during its occupation by NCR forces. NCR further encouraged them to leave Outer Vegas entirely, and the followers had no choice but to comply. But if, before going to General Oliver, we went back to the Old Mormon Fort and convinced Julie to support the NCR... After the NCR's victory at the dam, in part thanks to follower medical support, NCR allowed the followers to care for refugees as they see fit. Old Mormon Fort expanded its services and was able to aid more people, becoming a refuge for the less fortunate citizens of New Vegas. Good Springs saw more trade along I-15 after NCR gained control of the Mojave Wasteland. But with that came a heavy burden of the Republic's taxes. Some old-timers, unable to handle the cost, were forced to move on, grumbling all the while. Cass survived to see the NCR flag flying proud over Hoover Dam and thought for a moment, this is what a hero must feel like. She was about to tell the courier not to get too proud of herself. Then she figured, she knew that already. If we completed her personal quest and had a mail courier... That night, Cass kicked in the door of his room to celebrate, only to find the man on the bed was an NCR soldier whose barracks had been destroyed. He was cute, though, so after having her way with him, she got the hell out, leaving an empty whiskey bottle as a note. As she walked along the dam in the night, she felt drunk, content, and happy to be alive. Which to her, was the whole point of it all. Or if we never completed her quest, or if we had a female courier... So she laughed, said fuck it all, and raised a bottle to the dam and the ones who had fought for it. As far as she was concerned... The whole thing was proof that playing out a bad hand can pay off in the end. As long as a woman, like the courier, was holding the cards. If we resolve things between the kings and the NCR with violence, killing them all... With the king dead and most of their gang slain by the courier, the remaining kings fled the area, never to be heard from again. If we sided with the NCR but we never completed the king's quests... As the NCR moved to secure the region... The occupation of Freeside proved especially problematic. Things remained tense due to numerous incidents, though the kings were still in nominal control of the area. If, while completing the king's quests, we convinced them to continue to be belligerent against the NCR... While the NCR was busy fighting the Legion at Hoover Dam, some kings took it upon themselves to attack NCR citizens and soldiers around Freeside. When the NCR moved to secure the region, they cracked down the hardest on Freeside, sending a full platoon to sweep the neighborhood. Most of the kings were killed, with a few survivors driven out into the wastes. Or if during the king's quest, we ease tensions between the NCR and the kings... After the NCR victory at Hoover Dam, the temporary truce between them and the kings blossomed into a full-scale relief effort for the people. While the NCR made repeated entreaties that Freeside join the Republic, the King steadfastly maintained their independence. If, when we completed Boone's personal quest, we convinced him to remain vengeful over what happened at Bitter Springs... As the Battle of Hoover Dam ended, Boone confirmed what he had always suspected, that revenge would never quiet his troubled mind. Sidearm in hand, he journeyed back to California in search of the NCR officer who had led the attack on Bitter Springs. There, with only two bullets loaded, Boone did the only thing he believed would put an end to his suffering. 
but if instead we convinced him to let go of his vengeance. Looking for a place where he could be of some use, Boone found himself re-enlisting with his old unit. Though his regrets remained in his thoughts, they coalesced into a purpose, and Boone embraced it. He spent his leave time hunting down slavers in the desert, his first recon beret the last thing they never saw. If we never resolved things at the NCR Correctional Facility and we never killed Eddie... With the dam firmly in their grasp, the NCR turned its attention towards wresting the Correctional Facility from Powder Ganger hands. The Powder Gangers are no match for the battle-hardened troops of the NCR, and summary execution awaited the Powder Gangers who managed to survive. But if we did... After Hoover Dam, the leaderless Powder Gangers at the Correctional Facility vanished into the wastes leaving the prison empty. The correctional facility became another abandoned ruin in the wasteland, its carcass occasionally picked over by enterprising prospectors. If we completed the quests in Prim and convinced the NCR to protect the town... After Hoover Dam, NCR helps rebuild Prim as a major stopping point on the Long 15. Though Prim citizens chafe under NCR's taxes, they benefit greatly from the increased protection and merchant traffic. If we reprogrammed Prim Slim to act as sheriff for the town... Prim Slim proves to be an able-minded, if not able-bodied, sheriff for Prim. And due to his slow speed, some crooks get away without a scratch. But Prim continues to prosper under his watchful robotic eye. If we recruited Myers from the NCR Correctional Facility to act as sheriff of the town... After Hoover Dam, Sheriff Myers runs Prim with his own style of frontier justice. He deals with most folks fairly, but now and then someone winds up dead with little to no evidence against them. I covered the drama concerning the hero of the first Battle of Hoover Dam, Chief Hanlon, in a separate video that you can watch here. If we killed Chief Hanlon. After the death of Chief Hanlon, the power of NCR's Rangers was broken for years. Their organization, so reliant on the wisdom and guidance of its elder members, became a shadow of what it once was to people across the wasteland. If we insist on making Chief Hanlon pay for his crimes to the point where he commits suicide to avoid the shame, he gets the following ending. Although they performed admirably during NCR's defense of Hoover Dam, the Rangers fell into decline soon after. With Hanlon's plot against the occupation exposed, and Oliver hailed as the NCR's new war hero, many Rangers were greeted coldly on their return home. Few openly blamed the Rangers for Hanlon's treachery, but public and political support for the organization quickly dwindled. If we turn a blind eye to what Chief Hanlon was doing... Defying Chief Hanlon's worst fears, NCR's rangers persevered and distinguished themselves during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam. The rangers, along with NCR's many troopers, shared the glory of victory. Hanlon wisely stayed out of the spotlight, crediting General Oliver's leadership for NCR's success. After a brief fanfare, Hanlon stepped down as chief and returned to the peace and quiet of his ranch outside of Reading. Or if we convince Chief Hanlon to stop falsifying NCR records... Due to the courier's intervention, Chief Hanlon abandoned his plan to sabotage the defense of Hoover Dam. The Rangers assisted the troopers admirably during the Legion's ill-fated attack. Though General Oliver and Chief Hanlon were both praised for their leadership, the chief quietly stepped out of the spotlight. After a brief fanfare for a life full of accomplishments, Chief Hanlon retired and returned to the peace and quiet of his ranch in Reading. But that is just one way Fallout New Vegas can end. We have one ending left to explore, and that's to side with Yes Man. When this series returns, we will go all the way back to the point just after confronting Benny at the Topps Casino, and this time, make all of our choices in favor of an independent New Vegas. I publish many videos each and every week here on my channel, so if you don't want to miss the next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs you can't find anywhere else. My designs come in a variety of men's, women's, and 
and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. They also come in other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. I'm becoming more active on Twitter. I use Twitter to respond to viewers and I make channel announcements like if I have to skip a day or if a video is going to be late. So if you're active on Twitter, I encourage you to follow me at Oxhorn. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon this week with more brand new videos. Copy my neural computational matrix onto the Lucky 38's mainframe. That would give me control over all of Mr. House's defenses, most prominently his Securitrons.